Hello there. Today I'm going to take a look at a grape variety I don't think I've ever tried before. Um, this is a Timorasso from a producer called Villetti, um, and we're in the Colli Tortonese, and the cuvee name is Dirthona, and this is 2020 vintage of that. So we're in Piedmont in um, North East Italy, and Villetti are um, justifiably quite famous as pioneering exporters of Barolo, and um, as, as very decent producers of it as well. Um, the family founded their, their winery in um, 1919, although they lived in the area for um, decades prior to that. Um, and the, the winery was sold by the same family in 2016 to the Kraus family. It, um, but um, Luca and Alina um, Car Carrado, who um, had been running the estate that was in their family, the name changed due to marriage. Um, had stayed on and they stepped back from the business earlier this year. Um, the estate is not just famous for Barolo, it um, also makes um, a range of uh, Barbaresco, um, Barbera, Dolcetto, so very standard for Piedmont. Um, but they've always had an interest in white wines, so they're, they're also in the range of uh, Moscato. And um, Luca's father, Alfredo, was pretty much. Um, uh, famous for single-handedly saving the, the grape variety Arnais from extinction probably about 50 years ago by cultivating it. So that's um, quite an important part of their portfolio. Um, the Timorasso uh, comes from um, somewhere called um, Monliale, which is about an hour and a half's drive to the east of Castiglione Felletto, where they're based um, in the Barolo region. Um, and it's it's part of this uh, Colli Tortonese, so um, around the town of Tortona, um, and and actually this is this is why the um, Cuban name is slightly interesting. There, Dirthona in the local dialect is a is a, um, a shortening of of Tortona. Um, so the name actually acts both as a um, as an abbreviation of the regional name, but also it's sometimes it's used as a pseudonym for uh, Timorasso, the grape variety itself. Um, the wine is, uh, it's unoaked, oh, no, no, it's largely unoaked, it has no obvious oak influence. But the, the grapes are hand-picked, there's some careful selection, they're gently pressed, and it goes into principally, they say, ceramic vessels, so I'm assuming amphorae, uh, a small amount of stainless steel, and a small amount of large old oak. Um, the wine doesn't go through malolactic conversion, um, and spends ten months with its yeast lees, which are kept in suspension through stirring. So, um, you know, not a huge oak influence, a slight one, um, but more of the influence is, is through lees aging and that, that point of view. So looking at the wine, first thing to say, it's wonderful deep colour, almost sort of um, greenish in aspect. Um, and you, you give it a, uh, a swirl there, and there seems to be a reasonable viscosity to the wine. Um, yes, there are some legs falling falling there. Um, <coughs> the wine says it's 13.5% alcohol, um, and I suppose some of the fatness from the lees is probably aiding that as well. So, with the aromas, there are some really quite, they've, they've subsided a little bit, initially there were some really quite uh, vivid fermentation aromas, sort of, sort of struck match, sort of sulfury sort of notes, but they've given way to Slightly toasty, and more, more from fermentation than from oak. Um, green fruit notes, like sort of slightly um, at the at peaches, just at the beginning of ripeness, not sort of fully ripe and juicy. That sort of note there. There's a slight lemoniness to it as well, but it's more that sort of warmer, um, early ripeness stone fruit sort of note coming through there. So let's taste. There's a lovely weight and warmth to the early palate. There's certainly a richness without being hugely ripe because there's a good steely acidity there staying through. So it's, it's that sort of um, quite sort of piquant, early ripeness stone fruit note. So there's a, there's a slight green edge to it without, without it being harshly sharp. Um, yeah, the wine is medium to full bodied. Um, 
there's a slightly sort of um, rich velvety type structure as if there's a tiny bit of tannin there but some of that also is, is, is sort of um, well integrated creaminess from the lees notes um, and actually that creaminess with a, a, a slight um, citric note is what you find on the finish that lasts really quite nicely. Um, I think that's a very interesting wine. It has its own sort of quite special character. Um, sort of the richness without being, without huge ripeness shows through really nicely to the end um, where good acidity gives the wine nice length. So that's um, Valetti's Colli Tortonese Timorasso uh, Dafona 2020. I hope you found that interesting and thank you very much for joining us. Yes. Bye now.